Hello, hello everyone. Today is June 9th. This is a release engineering meeting of the, uh, this, excuse me, right? It's a SIG release, a release engineering subject, sub project meeting. Uh, this is a meeting that will be recorded and available on the internet. So please be mindful of what you say and do. Please be sure to adhere to the Kubernetes code of conduct and in general, just uh, be awesome people. So we got a few things to cover today, and I would ask uh, for any of the release managers or anyone who's on the call to uh, take a moment to add anything that you want to the agenda, uh, so we can discuss that in a bit. Um, I think we, we've got Marco here, actually. So um, I'm not sure if there are any updates, but Marco, do you want to talk a little bit about Triage Party? Well, we don't have anything specific for this week. We had no meeting last week, but Marty said that he's working on the GCP related things and security stuff. So that's the only update we have right now. And if anything new comes up, we'll keep everyone updated. Okay, okay, sounds good. Thank you for that. Let me drag this update to the top now. Um, and if anyone would like the uh, the illustrious honor of being our note taker, that would be awesome. So next up on the list is uh, VDF, right? So the uh, VDF or the vanity domain flip is the move uh, the move of the um, of the endpoint for uh, kates.gcr.io. Uh, over to from uh, gcr.io slash Google containers over to um, Kate's infra. So that would be um, gcr.io slash uh, Kate's, uh, Kate's artifacts prod, right? Um, so this was initially scheduled for April um, and we had some issues in April. Uh, so uh, the issues were on the um, Google internal side, um, changing this unraveled a few things in their internal systems that they've been working out. Um, it sounds like they have since worked, uh, been just about done with working that stuff out. Um, so we're ready to try again. Um, the initial thought was to uh, maybe try this again for June 15th, um, which is next week, Monday. Um, but because we have some patch releases coming up, on the 17th, uh, I sent a note yesterday uh, saying that I'd much prefer us to, to take a look at doing the VDF after the patch releases, right? Um, so with the VDF, there is going to be that internal flip on the Google side, and then um, our piece will be uh, essentially cutting, cutting our infrastructure over to um, from Google infrastructure over to Kate's infra, right? So the PRs are already in flight um, and I've been kind of keeping those up to date in the background. Um, so when we need to pull the trigger, we should be able to do that fairly easily. Um, that will trigger kind of a change in our release process. Um, you'll be required as a release manager to now uh, promote the container images that you're pushing. Um, this is a change from being able to automatically uh, within a Nago push uh, your images directly to uh, to production. Um, so within the within the no mock phase uh, the uh, of the stage and release, um, essentially the variables just get swapped. Right, it goes from staging kates.gcr.io over to kates.gcr.io. And uh, the backing, uh, the backing registry for that, uh, our our GCP account has uh, right access into those buckets. Um, so from the Google, uh, from the Google side, and from that project, we're able to do that. Um, once we move over to Kubernetes Infra, we'll be using uh, a staging project, and from the staging project for uh, the uh, image push to be successful our image, we'd have to do an image promotion for those act actually to land from uh, the case staging Kubernetes uh, GCP project over to uh, Kate's artifact prod slash Kubernetes, right? Um, so any questions on that stuff?
Okay. Quiet crowd today. Um, all right. Next up, we are planning a set of patch releases for June 17th. Um, there's nothing in the wind so far that tells me that that wouldn't happen. I think we, we should uh, be good to go. Um, patches, uh, things have been steadily reviewed. I think, uh, Tim, do you remember exactly when our uh, cherry pick deadline is? 15th, the 12th, maybe? Uh, off the top of my head, no. OK. Let's do a quick check. I'm pulling it up. It is yeah, the 12th, yeah. I beat you to it. No, no, no. Um, so we're gonna. We're... Any coffee yet? You will beat me to everything today. <laughs> I, I'm like slurping an ice chai. I'm like, please wake up. <laughs> um, that line so... is uh, twelve. Huh? Um, this week, yeah. Yeah, the twelfth. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that maybe uh, we should send a quick note out to people that uh, cherry pick deadline is coming up and uh, maybe do that more consistently. I know it's part of the um, part of the patch release team handbook, but that handbook is kind of in flux and a little bit out of date. So um, let's let's do that. Uh, if uh, any of the release managers want to take care of that um just raise your hand i i can i can send them out they may okay so with that note just make sure that people know um people know what we're going to discuss in the next section um uh so the next section we're talking about uh um well one any questions okay Okay, so for the June 17th uh, patches, important to note, um, there will be a few changes inbound, um, which include CV fixes for the uh, uh, the CNI um, the CNI man in the middle uh, attack that was uh, announced on June 1st. Um, so it's important that we are uh, on top of it for that uh, patch release cycle. Um, not that we all always uh, that we um, usually are, but um, let's let's just uh, make sure that the communication is pretty tight there. There are a few things to um, be aware of. Um, one is the uh, one are the the changes within Kubernetes Kubernetes that have been backboarded, as well as there uh, the changes that have been made to the uh, Deb and RPM specs. Um, so. Starting in uh, one eighteen four and um, and the uh, and the the one seventeen and one sixteen variants uh, for the patches that are going out. Um, I'm losing the numbers on, off the top of my head. I think it's like one seventeen nine, seventeen seventeen seven, and one sixteen eleven. Right. Ooh, I got some coffee in me. <laughs> Um, so, so uh, just be aware that we are uh, starting in that release. We will be bundling the the CNI plugins package with the kubelet uh, the for the Debs and RPMs. Um, so the reason that we're doing this is to actually allow us to do upgrades of the the CNI plugins, right? So. Prior to this release, the latest CNI plugin uh, available on our package stream was uh, 075 or is 075 um, right now. Um, and the reason that we have not done updates for that is because uh, an update to uh, CNI plugins within our package stream will affect every, uh, potentially every uh, or a lot of the kubelet packages within our package stream, right? So the kubelet takes its dependency on uh, Kubernetes CNI package, and uh, the depends is uh, greater than or equal to, um, which means that any potential older version of Kubernetes are probably all of the older versions of Kubernetes if you were to install today using a dev or RPM. Um, and 
actually following the uh, the dependence, not doing any no depths uh, witchcraft, uh, you'll end up with uh, you'll end up with the newest version of, of CNI of the Kubernetes CNI package that we pushed, um, which means there is a, an entire matrix of uh, of versions uh, version skew that we haven't tested um, and is kind of not impossible, but unreasonable to at, at this point. Um, so we wanted to make sure that newer versions of uh, the Kubelet would have the correct uh, version of CNI. Um, this is a little better um, because we can actually uh, bundle and lockstep, right? So if we know that 119 uh, has, uh, you know, 119 is compatible with a new version of uh, the Kubernetes, uh, the CNI plugins, uh, if it's 087 or whatever the next few versions come out by the time that uh, um, that we cut the 119 release, then uh, we can we can add that we can add uh, that package as well. Right? Um, so so I think it's a net improvement. It allows us to uh, it allows us to remove the Kubernetes CNI package altogether. Um, rather remove the specs for, uh, uh, for it, not necessarily remove the package. The older versions, older in support versions of the devs and RPMs will still require uh, that package to be present. Um, but for uh, 119 and, and forward or 118.4 and, and all of the other uh, patches forward, um, that that's kind of how that will be set up. Um, and this, this takes care of a longstanding uh, question of, how do we release? Uh, how do we release Kubernetes CNI? Right. What's the overall process for that? So we're getting to the point where we no longer uh, will need to directly release it, um, and maybe we'll get to the point where uh, the required uh, the required bits for CNI are actually uh, bundled in the Kubelet from a code perspective and not a package perspective. Um, there was some discussion. There was some discussion on the mailing list uh, for SIG network and release engineering a while back. Um, and we can probably reignite that to see if, uh, so there are a few things that we take dependencies on for the for the, the CNI plugins, but it's very possible that because other CNIs are actually responsible for for uh, handling um, handling a lot of you know implementing you know implementing IPAM and, and, and different things like that there's a possibility that um, we do depend on like that loopback the loopback plugin that's in that package and I believe maybe the bridge plugin that's in the package um, but if those were part of the kubelet upstream then there would be less need to even have uh, even have those CNI plugins bundled um, so we can kick off that conversation once we know the uh, the bundling is actually successful, right? We want to take a few incremental steps here and see where we get. So any questions on that? Sorry, I have some sniffles today. Um, all right. So next topic, we are talking about the uh, consolidation of the patch release team and branch managers, right? Um, so we've been, you know, we've been uh, building up this crew for a little bit, and I believe we have about nine plus people. Uh, between uh, branch managers and patch release team, um, I think that uh, you know I've seen I've seen Carlos and Sasha and and Daniel really step up to uh, to do some of the work on the patch release side, um, take some of that load off of Tim and I um, during the patch release phase. So if you're aware of um, if you've been around for cutting a release and uh, more specifically cutting a, uh, a patch release or a um, or a uh, minor dot uh, zero release uh, for Kubernetes, um, you know that the process takes about 
say four hours and change, um, plus plus some additional time for um, f so that's for the the mock stage and mock release, um, as well as it's closer to five, might be closer to five, yeah. Um, the so that's for the mock stage and release, and then the and then the actual stage and release. Um, and then you add some time for uh, doing announcements, plus uh, plus cutting the devs and the RPMs, reaching out to the the build admins on the Google side and, and cutting the devs and RPMs, right? So it's a decent amount of lead time, and uh, it's a decent amount of time that you would be uh, tied up for the day. Um, so it's uh, so it's been nice to be able to have uh, be able to have a, a few extra uh, helpers, uh, working on that. Um, and kind of, um, the, what's, what's been ad additionally nice is that, you know, for the team, we have a, we have a few people in a different, in a bunch of different time zones and, um, having the advantage of, uh, having people, uh, start the release, uh, process before we get in for the day, um, means that we can, uh, we can work on other things throughout the the work day um so that's been that's been super helpful i think they have all done an awesome job um there are some additional responsibilities of the patch release team but i think access wise uh access is identical between the branch managers and patch release team and um and the uh the requirement to uphold the security embargo policy uh, is also the same between the two teams. Um, so I think with that said, uh, it makes a lot of sense for us to consolidate the two teams, um, give uh, Carlos, Daniel, and Sasha the, the mandate to cut patches on a, uh, you know, on, on a recurring basis, um, as well as uh, give us some additional eyes on doing patch reviews um, uh, across the uh, in between uh, patch review uh, patch release cycles. Um, so all of that said, um, thank you for your super awesome work, uh, everyone. Um, Carlos, Daniel, and Sasha are officially the entire team are officially release managers. Carlos, uh, Daniel, and Sasha have effectively been promoted. Uh, as a result of this consolidation. Um, so congrats to y'all and uh, thank you for the work that you've been doing. Yay. Thank you Go. for supporting us. Go team. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so some housekeeping that happens as a result of that. Um, I staged a few PRs now, uh, most of which are now merged um, to essentially uh, change the language in a bunch of different places. So if you're opening a cherry pick, it will now say that uh, you should reach out to the release managers group instead of the patch release team, things like that. And I've kind of done it, done an initial sweep of uh, a few areas uh, to make sure that we hit every area that had a mention of specifically the patch release GitHub team, which no longer exists. Um, we also had a PR for uh, Kubernetes org that did some uh, consolidation of our uh, of our GitHub teams, um, and also added some some nice things, uh, which was uh, essentially nesting all of the GitHub teams. So if you are part of a uh, sub project um, within SIG release, uh, there is a top level. Uh, SIG release notification group, right, that we can use for, you know, bugs or something is really on fire. We need to contact everyone um, or we could use help with a review or something. Um, the, that notification group is there and will ping everyone on every sub project within SIG release, um, which funny enough is actually, I think the number is actually less than the people that we had on the SIG release uh, uh, GitHub team uh, prior. Right, so um, I think going through them really quickly, we've got you know the uh, the licensing, release engineering, release team sub projects, and then with within those um, for the release engineering side, we've got the release managers group, um, which gives access um, to Kubernetes Kubernetes to do things like uh, doing cherry pick approvals, right, and overall right access to the repo. Um, We've got the milestone maintainers group, which will remain separate um, 
and within the release team, we have the SIG release leads, uh, the, uh, the release team leads, which uh, gives some right access to Kubernetes, Kubernetes for the leads and, and lead shadows. Um, and then also the CI signal uh, team, I think is the other team that we have. Um, so those are all properly nested. Um, we had a bunch of them separate before, um, but they're all properly nested, which means that um, you can, if you were to grant privileges to a uh, top level team, um, those privileges would cascade into the nested uh, groups. Um, so if that's something that you wanted to do, please be careful, uh, noting that there may be groups under you uh, or within your team that might not necessarily need or want that access. Um, then, uh, yeah, and be aware of the notification team. Uh, the, the SIG release notification team does have quite a few people on it. Um, so just be careful with, uh, with, with pings, use that only if you need to. Um, we'll be talking about a uh, additional cleanup or, uh, of, the, of the, the GitHub teams. I think our teams are pretty clean at this point, but um, within the GitHub administration team, we've been talking about having a few different teams for um, different purposes. Uh, so uh, originally, if you've seen the, um, the uh, initial layout of GitHub Teams, we've had um, the, it will be SIG, SIG foo dash uh, API reviews and PR reviews and test failures and bugs uh, and miscellaneous, right? So that was kind of the initial layout and there were about six or so teams. Uh, we found that a lot of that was, um, a lot of that was not used. Um, and the teams are, that do exist today um, are kind of out of date. Um, so we're, we're kind of uh, going from SIG to SIG and, and working on cleaning up those teams. Uh, the new structure will essentially be top level SIG foo. Within the top level SIG foo will be SIG foo leads, which will include the, the chairs and technical leads for that SIG, and then SIG foo PR reviews, right, which will be a ping group for people who are interested in, in, um, in doing PR reviews. So that said, we already have a SIG release admins team, um, which is functionally the same as the leads team right now, although we could, we could tweak that a little to allow more people to, um, to jump in uh, with uh, right access to repos and things like that. Um, but that's something for another day. Um, the one that we're going to tackle soon, um, and this will be mentioned in the SIG release meeting, I know I'm going into some top level stuff right now, um, is the SIG release uh, PR reviews uh, list. So if you are interested in doing PR reviews for us uh, when we create this team, or let us know ahead of time, uh, feel free to, um, you know, ping me or ping Tim or, or mention in the channel that you're interested in, in doing something like that and we can get you added to that team when we when we create that team. Um, so that is, um, so that's kind of that for the GitHub teams. Um, there's still some work to do on the, uh, on the consolidation. Um, so there are several other references for uh, patch release team and branch managers that are a little bit more nebulous because they point to the handbooks. Um, so I'm also working on a follow-up to the PRs um, that were kind of kicked off on like Friday and over the weekend um, to consolidate those handbooks too. I'm still thinking a little bit about the form of the handbooks and what I want to put where. Um, I think the general structure will be like handbooks and then uh, uh, handbooks uh, subdirectory for uh, release engineering. Within that subdirectory will be stuff like managing branches.md and managing releases.md and onboarding.md, right? So we're going to try to deduplicate the information within uh, the release manager's uh, handbooks um, for the sake of making it a little easier to read, as well as, um, as well as, uh, having fresher content, right? I think there's some things that have uh, been progressively updated in the branch manager handbook and, uh, and there's staler content within the patch release team handbook. Um, so we wanna make sure that those handbooks stay up to date all the time. Um, and 
yeah. Yeah, I know that was a wave of stuff, um, but release managers. <laughs> awesome background, by the way, Carlos. Uh, release managers, are there any questions? Yay. Okay, so one one thing to note is that we do have a bit of a um, a bit of a blurb within the the uh, branch manager handbook for uh, for release manager associates, um, and I think that that is maybe insufficient. Um, that blurb will also be pulled out into kind of like the onboarding doc um, and walk through some of the general expectations. Um, one of the expectations for, uh, you know, for release managers, you know, this is former patch release team as well as branch uh, uh, management, um, is to establish a mentorship relationship with um, with the uh, release manager associates. Um, so if you are, um, I'm pretty sure it's happening. I'm, you know, based on reports and all that stuff. Um, but if you are a release manager associate. Um, and you are you feel like you're not getting feedback from us uh, about tasks that you're working on or you're unsure of what to work on next, uh, how to take the next steps. Uh, we want to, one, feel free to reach out to myself or Tim to, to chat about that. Um, two, we want to make that path a lot clearer. Um, another reason for the consolidation is that we, um, I think we did not do a good job in uh, really explaining what the the trajectory from you know kind of evolving from a uh, an associate to to a branch manager to a patch release team member uh, was I think it was harder to uh, make the delineation between um, patch release team member um, per being promoted from a, a a branch manager to a patch release team member um, and honestly so many so many of the duties are are the same you're doing PR review you're doing uh, you're doing the mechanics of, of actually cutting the releases, as well as um, uh, documentation, PR review, um, and, and uh, in general, just representing us across the um, across the project. So, um, so this I think this made a lot of sense, and um, the overall feedback on the PRs was was positive. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, if you find um, if you find yourself running into stale documentation around the release engineering process, please let us know. Um, please feel free to help clean up links as you can. Um, I would say for the link cleanup, just give me a few days because I'll be working on uh, the consolidation of of the handbooks and um, in that. I'll be sweeping a few repos. There, there are a few references. There's still one I have to clean up for the Kubernetes website. Um, but yeah, that some of that stuff is in progress. Um, related to related to cleanups and new documentation, uh, the next thing we've got on our list is Go updates. Um, so Veronica, this should be a fun one. Um, why don't you give your update first, and then I'll I'll jump in. Hey, Veronica. Okay, she might not have audio right now. Um, but I think uh, what I understand from the chat and uh, what's going on is now that we have the um now that we have new versions of go out uh new patch release versions of go um so go 1 13 12 uh veronica are you back <laughs> hi <laughs> okay you want to go for it can you hear me yep okay cool yeah so we have been um working on the update uh, on the bump or I, I, I don't know how to say because it's not really like it's going back a little bit but well 
what we need for bump, uh, the Go version. whatever update. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, for the Go version, it has been definitely interesting because like the whole process itself uh, is uh, quote unquote simple, <laughs> but um, all of this uh, has been possible because you um, taught us how to do everything. And so uh, going through it, has been um also like when we do the steps we have well we don't have to but it's useful to document it <laughs> so that um we can leave like the trays behind so that more people can do it in the future uh and yeah so right now i was uh waiting for um, the, my initial pr to be um uh accepted yes i will yeah. release that in a bit um yeah so that, that's fine I, I i was busy with something else so uh just to go on and then to uh hand it up to marky um and yeah awesome thank you for uh getting started on that um <laughs> finally <laughs> but <laughs> No, but it, it has been great. Uh, I, I just wanted to mention that part of like you walking us through it because it was definitely very, well, not, not only helpful, but like critical. <laughs> we wouldn't have been able, or at least I wouldn't have been able to figure it out uh, on my own. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. It's also this... critical the way you approach this to do it thoroughly and deliberately and make sure that the docs are are super clear based on how you walk through it. That is is really huge. Thank you. Yay, go team! <laughs> <laughs> um, so so that said, our our process for updating Go has been this um, has been essentially dark magic. Um, it's it's something that was not well known by a lot of people. Um, it's something that was not documented. Um, there may be three or four people in the project that knew how to do it. And those are some of our more uh, bandwidth constrained uh, contributors. So you take people like uh, like uh, Jordan Liggett and Dims and and uh, Christoph and uh, Ben. Um, they're all aware of di different uh, things to watch out for uh, sharp spikes uh, in that process and kind of uh, prior, you've seen them collaborate towards the end of a release cycle um, and just pop in and say like, hey, do we need to update Go or should we update Go? Um, and then stuff just starts happening and a, and a wave of PRs will happen. And, um, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Go is updated, right? And you're not entirely sure what happened, but, <laughs> but, um, but it's done, right? Um, so it's very important for us to um, to make sure that that process is owned by uh, the release engineering team um, or the release engineering sub project overall. Um, and uh, because of that, uh, you know, I've kind of gone off into the, the woods of, of Kubernetes and uh, tried to, to, to figure this out, pinging them constantly, um, making a few things easier to do. Um, the, one of the hardest things that we have uh, to contend with is often the images that we care about, the base images, the, um, the images for dependencies and what have you, or um, have, have classically only been uh, built and pushed uh, within Google infrastructure, right? Um, so part of what we did was working towards, um, working towards uh, adding that, uh, we're working towards uh, adding those images to uh, Kubernetes infrastructure. Um, so for anyone who's interested in uh, these sessions that uh, Tim and Veronica were talking about, uh, the sessions for the Go updates are on um, our SIG release playlist on YouTube, if you wanna check those out, right? So it should say like rel eng Go Lang update walkthrough or something, part one and part two. Um, so we did those, we did that recording a few weeks back and uh, you wouldn't expect it, but a lot of the update is, is just uh, 
uh, updating images in different places, right, and promoting them, and then you know swapping a variable to use the new image, and so on and so forth. Um, so I won't go into the process here. Check out those videos. There's about, I think, close to three hours of content um, as we we talk through a lot of that stuff. It's uh, I think it's it's been interesting to me to discover how that's done, um, and I think I think the videos are generally interesting. We keep a uh, it's it's nice and peppy, you know. <laughs> so if you want to check those out, go for it. Um, so some notes on the uh, on the Go updates. Um, I am working through. Uh, so Veronica is working through the uh, Veronica and Marky working through the uh, the Go one thirteen twelve update. I am uh, pushing the boulder up the hill on the uh, on the Go one fourteen uh, four update. Um, so we're kind of working those in tandem. Uh, I, I believe the one one thirteen twelve update is going to land first, um, which is uh, why it's more important for them to continue moving forward. Um, the one fourteen ones are blocked by a uh, uh, etcdb bolt uh, update. Um, there are some unsafe things uh, happening in their package. Uh, right now that we want to make sure that we bump to a new version, um, the new version which does not exist yet, um, before uh, merging a PR for, for the 114.4 update. There are also some scalability concerns uh, that have been since worked out, um, and those were present in, I believe, uh, 114.0 and 114.1. Um, those have been since worked out, um, I think, from 114.2 forward. Um, so we're, we're ready from the go side. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're also ready from the etcd side, um, before, before bumping that up. Um, so within the notes, I, um, I started a skeleton of, uh, of what the, of what the, um, update doc is going to look like. Um, so I mentioned that we'll be putting a bunch of things in the handbooks, uh, directory, um, within the release engineering. Uh, uh, folder on SIG release. Um, so we'll be doing that. Um, this is kind of the first PR that has something landing in that handbooks directory. Um, and the reason it's handbooks and not role handbooks, there are no longer really any release manager roles, right? So these are just kind of handbooks, right? Um, so the as I do that consolidation, you'll see more and more stuff move into that handbooks uh, uh, subdirectory. Um, but this will be the first doc. Um, so it's linked in the notes if anyone is interested in doing some initial initial review. It's really just a skeleton. Um, it it lets you know the steps based on the um, based on the table of contents. Uh, but right now it's just some initial verbiage around like, hey, this is what the stock's for. Here's the intended audience and the scope of uh, of the update. And then um, kind of when you're signaling intent, saying that you're going to do this update. Um, here's what that might look like, right? Um, creating the issue, reaching out to the, uh, reaching out to release engineering and giving us a heads up, maybe contacting scalability if it's a, if it's a minor version update and things like that, right? Um, so release managers, feel free to take a first pass at that. It doesn't really have uh, any extreme technical content just yet. Um, but if you've been following around uh, the, um, the Go update issues um, and PRs and, and tagged on that stuff, you should be familiar with, with kind of um, what we're, we're driving at there. Um, cool. Um, I realized I'm not done <laughs> there. Uh, unfortunately, um, the Go updates, so tricky things to understand, um, the Go updates are also sometimes paired with uh, required update to Bazel. Um, and I know I just said everyone's favorite word. Um, so what we've done to make it a little easier to our, uh, what, what uh, Eric has done, uh, Feta, uh, of FetaBot fame, um, to make it a little easier to do updates for Bazel in Kubernetes Kubernetes, um, there is a repo called Repo Infra. Repo Infra create, uh, has some tools, um, tools that are, uh, generally useful across multiple repos. So the initial idea for this repo was to um, repo infer is kind of this thing that you import, and then you get all of the bells and whistles that uh, yeah, of, of tools that we've been building within repo infra, right? Um, 
not too many repos are hooked into repo infra. Uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes is one. Uh, the Kate's release uh, repo is also one. So if you've noticed, you're you're able to do the, um, you know, be able to do a uh, hack update all or hack verify all within Kubernetes release. Um, the scripts that are doing the verification don't actually live in that repo. In, in our repo, they live in repo infra, right? So it's kind of a framework to allow you to, to, to do a few things easier. Um, so that does like uh, go updates, it'll update, um, it'll update some, some scripts and, and Bazel files based on, uh, based on changes in GoMod. If you have, um, you know, if you've changed a few files, it'll, um, if you've changed a few, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, go, go files within the packages, it'll, it'll update that stuff. It'll, it'll make sure that the right Bazel files are in place or rewrite them. Um, for the verify step, it'll do things like verify the boilerplate so that you have a copyright header on your, um, you know, on your uh, your Go packages or your your um, your shell scripts and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, it does a little a little updating, little verification stuff. So we have that in um, we have that in Kubernetes, Kubernetes, or we leverage it in Kubernetes, Kubernetes. And um, the one of the one of the niceties that the uh, that repo infra includes is uh, the the Bazel uh, Go rules. So every, uh, if, if you're familiar, every version of Go, um, they tend to release a new version of these Bazel Go rules, right? So how to do Go-like things within Bazel, right? Um, so every now and again, a new package for that gets published, uh, or a new release for that gets published, and we want to pick that up, right? So maybe we'll pick that up in repo infra first, and then make sure that, and then cut a release, and then make sure that the the repo who is a downstream dependent of of repo infra has the the current version of repo infra, right? Um, so uh, all of this to say, uh, Veronica, that's what we're going to have to do this time. Um, so I'm already thinking about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Because we have, so right now, uh, Kubernetes at master is at version uh, repo infra 005, right? Repo infra 005 includes Bazel rules, I think like 022.1 or 3, which support up to uh, go 113.11 and go 114.3, right? So to be able to do the 113.12 and 114.4 updates, um, we need to update repo infra to include the new um, the Bazel Go rules and anything that needs to be bumped in Skylark or Skylib or whatever they're calling it today. Um, so that said, once you get to the KK side, we'll sync up. Hopefully by then the uh, the repo and for stuff is all handled. Um, so we essentially have to work <laughs> on the master bump. <laughs> I know Basil, right? Uh, I'm thrilled. <laughs> who, who would have thought? Um, so we have to work on the master side and then uh, and then backport. Um, the repo infra bump to a few of the branches that have a similar Go version. So all of the active support branches, um, the 118, 117, and 116. Um, I got stuck on the previous repo infra bump on the 118 branch. Um, so I'm going to just update that PR when, when, when master is ready um, to, to bump to repo infra 006 that is to be released. Um, so yeah, I will I will keep you posted on that stuff. Um, you can still do the the cube cross um, image build and promotion um, and the Kate's cloud builder update, um, and then and then we'll all get stuck together once it comes uh, once once we get to the 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 KK bump itself. Sweet, uh, this is definitely a teamwork. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to do it by myself, uh, mostly for the obscure little secrets that you have to know. Uh, and I'm, Basil is never, never straightforward, at least uh, that has never been my case. <laughs> yeah, like, same, same for me, same for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm usually pinging in the background like, 
hello, someone, <laughs> someone send help. Uh, um, so, so yeah, we'll, we'll get through it together. Um, I think it's going to be, it's easier than it, um, than it would have been if, uh, if it was all in Kubernetes, Kubernetes, I think, mm -hmm. um, it makes it a little different. Uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult because we have uh, cube cross in one location, and we've got uh, the Bazel updates in a different location, and yeah. yada yada yada. But um, what the win is in uh, merge velocity, right? Um, yeah. Because cube cross is no longer in Kubernetes, Kubernetes. And uh, and the updates for the uh, the Bazel libraries are no longer in uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes, it's faster to iterate over uh, over versions of those, right? Right. Um, mm -hmm. So we can. So I've been basically carrying bumps of the of the one fourteen images uh, up until the time that we're ready to to actually merge it into Kubernetes. Kubernetes, and I haven't had to you know essentially be at the the mercy of the uh, the extensive test suite that we have in Kubernetes, Kubernetes, right? Um, right. So, yeah. uh, and Sasha, yes, uh, I saw that PR come through. Um, so Sasha put up a PR to uh, to essentially. So we have two issues that were opened. Um, one was in Kubernetes, Kubernetes, which is please uh, please remove uh, Bazel infrastructure, right? We are fairly far away from being able to do that. Um, but we're trying to assess the different things that it would be required um, to make that happen. Um, if y'all are interested in looking at that issue and how much support it has, it's uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes 88553. Um, and you know, you'll see a variety of comments from uh, different kind of senior members of the project uh, essentially complaining about Basil. Um, so uh, that's a that's a fun issue to to read through. Um, it'll give you some context about why we want to make that kind of change. Um, Sasha, I believe, opened a, uh, a sister issue um, within Kubernetes release to talk about uh, removing Basil infrastructure from uh, from our repo, right? So uh, it, Basil overall becomes easier to remove when we um, stop using it, <laughs> stop taking a dependency on it uh, in, in, uh, in smaller repos. Um, so we're trying to, um, we're trying to set uh, some example there. Um, we do lose kind of the niceties of being able to uh, uh, import some verification and update scripts, but um, I think it's a minimal, uh, a minimal win that we were getting out of that. Um, and I, I think overall, uh, removing Basil on our side, on the release side, on the Kubernetes uh, release repo side, uh, will make it easier for us to uh, understand what's happening in our tests. Um, so, huh, okay, <laughs> that's that's it for Go and Basil updates, I think. Um, and now, with a few minutes left, I see no new things on the agenda. I'm wondering if uh, we want to open the floor to questions, comments, concerns, uh, talk about new people. I see a few new faces on the call. Do you want to pop in and introduce yourself to everyone? Oh no, we lost some new faces, okay. Um, Hui, I know that you don't always get to pop up on this call. Do you want to say hi? You're scaring everyone away, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else want to say hi? And everyone disappears. <laughs> You said basil and scared everybody off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised everyone stayed on for that long. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, um, as you can see, we've got a bunch of fun things coming. Um, one thing to, to note is that we've got um, on the SIG level, we've got a presentation to the community on the 18th, I believe. 
so we, next week Thursday. Um, so I hope to see a bunch of you there for that. Um, Tim and I will be working on the deck. Um, but yeah, we'll be talking about, I guess it's been a while so now that the, uh, the community meetings have gone monthly. Um, so it's been a while since we've done an update to the community. Um, so we'll be scraping, be scraping a bunch of the emails that I've sent over the past like six months or so and uh, putting together um, some presentations uh, based on that. We've done a lot of, um, later Joseph, um, we've done a lot of really phenomenal work uh, and could not have been done without this awesome team. Um, so I want to heavily, heavily, heavily um, congratulate and pat y'all on the back. Uh, and I'm going to uh, shout it loud during the community meeting. So um, thank you again for the work that you've been doing. Um, it has made our infrastructure faster, better, stronger. Um, and I think we've, we've built a real sense of uh, camaraderie around this group. Um, so yeah, go team. <laughs> All right. Well, if no one has anything else, I will give you those six minutes back. Um, Y'all have a great rest of your week. Later. Adios, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.